It's uh, Saturday in Shenzhen. It's raining. Some flights were canceled, delayed, so people actually have troubles to get into Shenzhen. But we have Startup Grind event now. I'm going to the venue and uh, you know we need to prepare everything because we're gonna start in about two hours. And then we are probably gonna have some dinner or we, are, uh, we will have some drinks with, uh, with Alan. We are just gonna chat about Rocket Space and how we can work together because we already started a conversation last time. So I wanna continue the conversation. So I love these weekends because it's uh, productive. <laughs> Today. We're doing a far side chat. With Start up Jan right. and L. This is the man. The new, the new comedy team of Jan and L. This is the man. This is the man. I'm the straight guy, he's the funny guy. <laughs> I guess there are some people still on the way because it's raining and, and so it's pretty pretty hard today to, to get here. But uh, anyways, thank you very much for coming. Welcome to Startup Grind. Today uh, we have our, our first ever event in, in uh, Shenzhen happening on Monday and Tuesday. So we're very excited to see um, what's going on here. Alan, thank you very much for joining us. I know that you just uh, came back from London where Rocket Space opened a new space or a new campus. Thank you, Jan. Uh, thank you, uh, folks, for being here. Uh, it's uh, good to have you here at Rocket Space Shenzhen. It's uh, our first major event of, uh, since the opening, so really appreciate you uh, joining us today. I started, uh, I was born in Taiwan, uh, immigrated to the U.S. when I was nine, came back to China uh, since uh, 1995, so, so it's been a heck of a ride, you know. <laughs> I want to know because you mentioned the very important thing that you need to kind of adapt, you need to localize, you need to bring something special or something, you know, that the market will see value in. And so what is this for China? One of the things that we do is we work with a lot of corporations in China. Obviously, uh, in, in China, we're, we have a leg up, as we say, because one is um, our partner in China is the HNA Group. Yeah. which is a large conglomerate uh, in, in China. Already I've got a case where our partner is bigger than big. How do we help them to be innovative? Okay. See, see where we're going at on this? Okay. Right? If, if, if we can't make you know, h and group innovative, I, I think we're <laughs> not going to be able to make anybody innovative. So, so that's the engagement. Okay. A big part of what we do has to do with how corporations work with innovation teams. Okay, this is happening everywhere in the world. Here in China, almost, I, I wouldn't say non-existent, but not the same, because we're not at that stage, but this will change very quickly.在中国的启动将获得国内最具优势的资源，通过优质的活动，把全球的创业者聚集在一起，碰撞出火花。we are a really true community builder, so we work with a lot of uh, companies like Rocket Space or co-working spaces and incubators because we need to use some space. So for us, it's a good value because we can have a space to host these events. And for Rocket Space, it's a great value because they get these exciting people or aspiring entrepreneurs that want to learn more. Shenzhen TV! The environment is good. What I'm really impressed is people stay here after the event. Look around. Hello everybody, on my way to TechCrunch, TechCrunch Shenzhen, uh, should be exciting because there is a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while coming from all around China and some of them even flying from the US, so uh, let's see what's going to happen there.
when he asks me like, what is like a business opportunity, right? It's it's different for for yeah, yeah. for everybody. So you know, maybe when I talk from my own experience or from what we do, right? For startup rights, so we build communities and we try to support entrepreneurs. We try to educate entrepreneurs. So definitely, I see such a big opportunity here for us because there is hunger for education here, especially the corporate innovation or entrepreneurship in general. I see like, you know, Trevor Owens, my friend, I mentioned him before. So he has this thing that a machine, he published the book, he translated it into Chinese, and it was very, very successful, you know, within certain circles. The another example is Steve Hoffman. I guess you have heard about this guy. So he also, he has been in China, he has been building his connections, and he opened a couple of like founder spaces, those incubators. He has a lot of partners, and he either gets deal flow, but actually main business is education, mm -hmm. because he's bringing that Silicon Valley uh, mindset or experience from all of those mentors that are part of his ecosystem, and he teaches this to companies in China because they need to be more innovative, right? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem with these like big corporations. Another example is in Rocket Space, right? So Rocket Space just entered Chinese market. And uh, they say that like one of I like, was interviewing their CMO at our event, and he said that one of the things or one of the goals they are trying to achieve is really turn these like big, big giant corporates into more innovative companies faster. Yeah, it's because they just struggle with that. And so education for sure. It depends what kind of company you are. In, and how you want to approach the Chinese market because again it's extremely hard because I see a lot of people trying to raise money with Woofy, right? You have heard about Woofy, the yeah. foreign wholly owned enterprise. Right. And so on like there are two sides of the coin. So the, the one side of the coin is that like now it's pretty easy to set up this company. It's cheap, it takes three weeks, maybe four weeks, and you can start doing business in China right away as a foreigner. You don't need a partner. But at the same time, it doesn't really help you with that investment because most of the Chinese funds, they cannot really invest in these kinds of companies. Yes, most of the Chinese funds are R&B or they're government backed. And if they, even if they want to invest, which is again very rare, you know, if they want to invest into a foreigner in China, then it's basically impossible for them to invest into Hufi. So, so you're saying all, all these uh, stories about the government pouring money into the ecosystem is going to local companies most of the time and of doesn't go to foreign foreign companies. Of course, definitely 99.9%. We try to create a bridge with Star Prime because what I try to do, what I have learned from other people, uh, is that you need to have a Chinese partner and you need to localize your business no matter what you do in China. That's just you know what I've learned along the way, and so what I'm trying to do, I always try to either have diverse team. So in Shenzhen, it's me, and then there's another girl who's Chinese, and she's basically running the Chinese part. So when we have a Chinese speaker, she does it in Chinese, and when we have an international speaker, either she or I do it in English. And of course, we still have more Chinese attendees because of course there's more Chinese than foreigners in China in general, right? So, so it makes it makes sense, but but um, you know it's kind of like we're trying to create that bridge. We want to provide people with a different experience, but at the same time, we are very humble in a sense that we are still in China and we need to localize as much as we can. So I don't want to be in another international community in China. I want to be super localized international community in China. I think that's the only way to go. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it, and enjoy it. Some